Hi, this is Anna Karin from Layers of Ink and I'm happy to be here with you uh, with my very first video tutorial. I'm going to show you how to make these quilled flowers that I placed in a mason jar. Uh, and the flowers were done with a tiny tatted florals Sussex dye by Tim Holtz. And this dye makes it very easy to make these types of flowers. And I also used the Tim Holtz mini mason jar looks like this and here you can see another example where I used the same flower dye I'll put the link below if you want to look more at that post we're going to start die cutting our flowers and I used the correspondence paper of Tim Holtz this works especially good to use the smaller pieces of paper with the small patterns on and just cut it up so that it can go through your machine and I'm going to use my Sussex Big Shot and since these are thin lit dies they work great together with a magnetic platform so we're putting that in the bottom and I'm also using the new Sussex Precision Base Plate which works great with the intricate dies you really you only need to put them through the machine once and you'll get a perfect cut each time and you want to put that one with the metallic side up so start by putting down your paper and then pick some of the dies I used more of the larger than of the smaller dies when I made my flowers and then you'll put the dies with the cutting side down like that and then just an ordinary cutting pad and we'll run it through the machine there we go. remove the tips dice and then you can just pop up the, out the flowers That's a perfect cut. And the die set also comes with the leaves. And I use the classic craft core cardstock to die cut the leaves. And you will just do the same thing. First the paper. Then the leaves the dice with the cutting side down and the cutting pad so the precision base plate places the the bottom cutting pad in your sandwich and it, it really helps with intricate dice then you can just pop out the leaves oops There we go. Okay. Because I'm putting my flowers in a jar, I wanted some larger leaves as well. And for that, I'm using the Tattered Flower Garland. And it's, it's a Sislet's dye by Tim Holtz. And to die cut this dye, you need the, the ordinary platform on tab one. And you'll and the extended cutting pad out. so I want to use these leaves so I'm just going to put paper there that's, then. that's the same green paper that I used for the other leaves it's nice to die cut your leaves from a few different shades of green so that they don't, they're not all the same and then just the second cutting pad and run it through the machine And there we have our larger leaves. I'm standing outside so I just moved out of the sun. The light wasn't quite good enough in my studio so I thought I'll try to do the recording outdoors instead. And you might be able to hear the, the birds and the wind. Okay so once you've die cut all your shapes and you'll definitely need more leaves than what I have here because this I just wanted to show you. So you can see here are some both larger and smaller flowers 
and we're going to ink the edges and I used distressing gathered twigs but any brown distressings will do equally well or you could use another color I think they would look nice in like with red ink or blue ink and you just ink the edges all around and then the the quill uh, the die set comes with a slotted quilling too it looks like this it's great and you'll be able to use it for, uh, for ordinary quilling as well so it's got a little slot in the center so all you do is to put the paper inside the slot and then start rolling and don't worry about tension or anything like that you can just roll There we go, and once you get to the end, if you want to, you can just release the flower slightly, that will make it larger. And we're going to glue it, and I use just ordinary white craft glue, clear drying craft glue. And there is a place for you to put your glue, which would be right there. But I also like to add a little bit of glue inside, just to make sure that the flower is glued properly. And then you'll just press it and hold it for a few seconds. And then put it aside to just let it dry a bit more. Maybe standing outdoors wasn't such a great idea because the wind just blow everything onto the ground. Okay, so I'm going to show you rose as well. So you'll see this is the rose shape. Again, you'll just roll it. Uh, and these flowers look great um, done in the craft core paper too. I did a project on that a few weeks ago. Just roll it to the end. And I find that you need to release the rose a little bit more than the other flowers, otherwise the center gets too rolled too hard. And again, put some glue at the back of the flower, just to make sure that all the papers are nicely down. And hold it for just briefly. Let's hope the wind stays away until I'm done. And just put it to the side. Now, if you could look at the first flower we made, we can spread it out and give it shape. There we go. I will do the rose as well in a second. And for the leaves. What you'll do with the leaves is that you'll fold them in the middle like that. Sand them with a Tim Holtz sanding block. And I also like to sand the edges. And then ink them. And fold and ink. You get a nice vein. And then don't be afraid to play around with your papers, it can handle quite a lot just to give them some shape and make them look more real again with the larger flowers, this or leaf cement, the same thing and then ink it there we go now because I'm putting my flowers in a jar I needed flower stems and for that I just used ordinary floral wire. At first I was planning to cover them with floral tape, but then I thought I'll do something more interesting and I am using tissue tape instead. So all you will do is to start at the top and just twist the wire. Oops. There we go, and you just tear off the tissue tape at the end. And to make it easier to attach the wire to our flowers, I made a little loop. It's 
just a little loop like that. I still wanted my stems to be green. So I decided to color them with the Ranger's alcohol inks and I used Pesto and Meadow. And so you'll just put a felt piece on your ink blending tool and just the ink and I always put the lids on my alcohol inks as soon as I've used them just to make sure I don't knock them over and I get that permanent ink everywhere and then simply color the wire if you're careful you don't need to get it on your hands but I always do there we go now all we need to do is to put a bit of glue on that loop that you made and then add a leaf or two Something like that. Don't, don't make all your flowers look the same. Alternate the sizes of the leaves and the way you place them. Just makes it look more interesting. And then that flower. Now we just put glue at the back. And you just place it on top of the leaves. And you can put a few more leaves down the stem like I did on my other flowers. Because I wanted some shine to my flowers, I decided to use some uh, rock candy distress stickles and just put it on a. You can put it on your craft sheet, or I'm using a piece of plastic packaging for my glue. <laughs> I moved to a more shadowy piece of the garden, and I'm actually getting mosquitoes. So I think I need to get more better lighting in my studio that I can do these videos there instead and just pick it up with your finger and apply it to the petals and once it's dry it looks really nice dry when the glue is properly dry you can also twist that wire and bend it into more interesting shapes so that they're not all just straight the mini mason jar was colored with alcohol inks from Ranger juniper and meadow just use the felt uh, the ink bending tool together with a felt uh, applicator on top it's very simple and then I just tied a linen ribbon around the jar and a little type token and just place the flowers into the jar And you're done and it'll be the perfect gift for someone or keep it for yourself thank you so much for watching and remember you can always find more inspiration on my blog layers of ink happy crafting bye